Margie McHugh. I'm the co-director of the Migration Policy Institute's National Center on Immigrant Integration Policy. And I'm here today to talk about the winners of our 2012 E Pluribus Unum Prizes Program. This year, the Prizes Program is awarding three $50,000 prizes for exceptional immigrant integration initiatives and one corporate leadership award for exceptional efforts by a corporation to promote immigrant integration. The award winners were selected from a pool of several hundred applicants that were received from across the U.S. Uh, a national advisory board helped us in making the selection of the prize winners, and the prize winners received their awards at the National Immigrant Integration Conference in September. MPI's National Center on Immigrant Integration Policy created the prizes program uh, back in 2008 with support from the J.M. Kaplan Fund. We and they wanted to raise up the incredibly important work that's happening all across the country to help immigrants and their children join the mainstream of U.S. society and also to build stronger relationships and stronger communities by bringing immigrants and the native born together. I'm very pleased to be able to introduce one of our 2012 E Pluribus Unum Prize winners, Californians Together. Californians Together is a statewide coalition comprised of parents, teachers, and a wide range of education experts and civil rights groups out in California uh, that's working to improve the education for all students in California, but particularly for English language learners. Those English language learners are students who arrive in California schools speaking a language other than English and in a sense have to do double the work of other students. They need to learn the English language at the same time that they're completing the curriculum that all other children in their grade are completing. This is an incredible powerhouse and yet at the same time it kind of operates almost on fumes when you look at it financially and that's partly because uh, they're a true coalition. They're bringing together a lot of the, the best of what many uh, other organizations have to offer by bringing to the table uh, so many uh, organizations and individuals that know these issues and are just trying to think and act in a coordinated way to figure out um, policy fixes, but also to really do the actual work of creating the trainings, creating the research, uh, and creating the mobilization that's needed in order to affect these policies in a state as large uh, and as uh, diverse as California is. The leading edge of the work that we and our prizes uh, committee saw throughout our selection process that were most impressive to us were, first of all, the work they've done to create the seal of biliteracy in California, and then also the work that they've done in order to ensure that the new movement to create common core standards uh, in K-12 education, that those standards would have to specifically be linked to the curriculum for English language learners, sure that that incredibly important reform doesn't bypass this huge group of students in California school. The seal of biliteracy recognizes students who graduate speaking two or more languages. It can be either someone who grows up in an English-speaking household who speaks Spanish or someone growing up in a Spanish-speaking household who speaks English as well as Spanish at the time of graduation. It is a very important tool for language preservation in the United States. It's a simple, it's a bold, and it's an appealing policy innovation that promotes academic achievement, it can be seen promoting economic development, and it can be seen as promoting social cohesion. It's not only been adopted by the state of California, but as of July, it has been adopted by the state of New York and the states of Illinois, Oregon, and even Georgia have expressed interest in the seal. We had several chambers throughout California who endorsed the seal of biliteracy. The Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce did, the San Jose Silicon Valley Chamber of Commerce did, the Almani Chamber of Commerce, and several others. The Orange County Business Council also endorsed it. And for the student themselves, we think there are um, two very significant things. One is it does really make them college and career ready. Um, uh, many times in the area of college and career ready, we look at students who really have the communication skills needed for the 21st century jobs, and some of those communication skills clearly are language. And for many of the, the international jobs, many of the um, service jobs in our, our communities require bi biliteracy and bilingualism, and our students now are prepared to say that they have that certification, um, and they really um, are in a position to say, I'm prepared. 
for any educators who are watching this, you may actually know Californians together for their work on long-term ELLs. That's not even a, a concept that was really in the literature until a year or so ago when Californians together pioneered uh, research that showed that, that an incredible proportion of young people who were in California's high schools were in fact young people who had never developed academic proficiency in English. In a sense, they appear to have learned English, uh, what, many, what many would consider schoolyard English. They, they had been passed up through the system, uh, seeming to be English uh, proficient, when in fact they had huge gaps in their academic proficiency in English, and those gaps were preventing them from doing grade level work. We collected data on 175,000 6th grade through 12th grade students who are English learners. That represented one third of all the state English learners um, in California. And when we looked at the data to see how long they've been with us and how they were doing with their language development and their academic achievement, we found that 59 percent of all the English learners in our middle schools and high schools have been with us for six years or more, somewhat stalled in their language development and doing very poorly academically. That became our definition of what a long-term English learner was, six or more years, not progressing in their language development uh, uh, beyond a certain level, and doing poorly academically. Um, and what we found, by and large, is that for most of the students, the services were spotty in the early grades, they were not consistent. In some respects, they were in English-only settings that did not um, have any supports for their language development or a differentiation for their academic achievement. And um, where they were now as long-term English learners is they were mostly sitting in mainstream classrooms, again, with no supports or specific instruction, or they were sitting in intervention classrooms which were not created for their specific language and academic needs. So with the additional information that we got directly from the school districts and the information we got from the survey, we produced a publication called Reparable Harm, Fulfilling the Unkept Promise of Educational Opportunity for California's Long-Term English Learners. And besides reporting what we knew, we also made very specific recommendations for what districts ought to be considering and what the state ought to be considering in terms of policy. We know this is not particular to California. We know this issue of long-term English learners is a phenomenon um, or, uh, or a critical issue across all states. And so after two years, we decided that we needed to do something policy-wise in the state. Um, the, the students are really, by and large, invisible in many situations, because as I say, they're sitting in mainstream classrooms or in reading intervention. And so to make them visible, we, came, we, we um, proposed a piece of legislation that had, has uh, three things in it. One is it's a, a definition of long-term English learners. We also have a definition of students at risk of being long-term English learners, because we want to try and catch kids early, try and do something for them so they don't become long-term English learners. And then the third piece of it is we're requiring the State Department to report to every school and every district the number of students who are long-term English learners and students at risk of becoming long-term English learners, They're to report annually. So the Friday before the award ceremony, before I got on the plane, we got the news that the governor signed the bill. So California, again, will be the first state in the nation that will have a uniform way of looking at these students. The students will become visible. Every school district will know who they are and how many they have. And our hopes is that that will generate um, a lot more of the work that we've begun already with districts who've become aware of these students. We are truly delighted to be able to provide one of our 2012 E Pluribus Unum Prizes to Californians together. Congratulations on your amazing work.